Hello, everybody, once again to my show, the Justin Jorgensen Podcast. I know it has been a long time, and I wanted to apologize because it has been a very long time since I have put out any content regarding um, my podcast, which is which is a shame. Uh, I don't really even have a reason for it. Um, I just kind of lost motivation there for a little bit, but I'm back, and we have a ton to talk about today, and most of it has to do with movies either being pushed back a long time or getting moved forward a little bit. Um, it is the era of movie delays, as I like to say. So, that out of the way, uh, one more thing I want to say is that I have moved podcast hosts. So, as you all know, most of you should know, you know I'm available on Google Podcasts, I'm on Spotify, uh, I'm on, I was on Anchor, but now I switched my host to Podbean, which is actually a paid host, which has a ton of more features that Anchor just lacked, and there were some loopholes in their terms and conditions that I wasn't a fan of, so I left Anchor, and now I'm with Podbean. Um, I am trying to get on Apple Podcasts, I'm trying to do that as fast as I can, but yeah, so you can listen to me on Google, you can listen to me on Spotify, YouTube, uh, and hopefully soon Apple, and I'm going to keep expanding and expanding as my listenership continues to grow. But with that down, uh, let's just move into our first main topic, which is that Godzilla vs. Kong has been pushed back to May 21st, 2021. Uh, this is kind of a new mutant scenario, where I just don't know if this movie's ever going to get released. <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. It's going to get released eventually, but it just feels like it's been such a long time since this film was announced. Um, it's been over a year already, since Godzilla King of the Monsters came out, which I personally absolutely loved. I thought King of the Monsters was a fantastic film. I ate it up, loved it to pieces. It was a little divisive, you know, it got it got mixed reviews. But I've absolutely I've loved every single film in the legendary Monsterverse in the Monsterverse so far. Um I think they're really building something special and I absolutely love what they're doing with the characters and you know, with the monsters and stuff. So Hearing that Godzilla vs. Kong got pushed back an entire year, a year and one day, it was slated for a November 20th, 2020 release, and it got pushed back six months and a day to May 21st, 2021. Um, I don't, I don't know when its original release date was, I think it was, was it? March of this year or April? I could be way off. I could be way off. Don't take my word for that. I'm just saying this movie has had so many release dates and it's a shame because and I'm not going to say that I'm surprised because it's supposed to come out it's supposed to, yeah, May 21st. It was supposed to come out in November and we haven't even got a trailer for it yet. That's that's kind of a problem. You need to start marketing like John Campion said, I don't think a movie needs to start marketing a year ahead. I don't think a movie needs to start marketing 10 months or 8 months. I think 6 months and below is like release a first trailer 6 months out. Let that build some momentum and then when you're 2 or 3 months out of the movie, release trailer 2. And then maybe trailer 3 if it needs it, but then like you know TV spots and it it, it will gain momentum organically if you release trailers at the right times. But I was getting worried because November 20th is, it may seem like it's a long way away, but we're already halfway, over halfway through June. So November 20th doesn't seem that far away now that you think that we are already over halfway down with 2020 and we're already halfway down with June. So I do think it was a smart move. Absolutely. 99% uh, of the time when a movie moves its release date, I think it's smart because you want to release it when it's ready. You don't want to rush it. You don't want... You know, you don't want a Justice League, a Justice League 2017 scenario where you didn't give the people working on it enough time. You didn't give the director, Zack Snyder, enough time. And then it blows up in your face and you lose $150 million. And then two and a half years later, you admit that you were wrong. Zack Snyder cut. I'm talking about that. If you didn't get that. But yeah. So obviously, I think it's smart. You know, I want this film to be great. I want it to... I want it to be the highest grossing film in 2021. Do I think it will be? I don't know. That's a, that is a question for another episode of my show. But I do think it's smart. I think it's disappointing because I really want to see this film. But I think they're trying to put, they're trying to make this as good as they can. And they just weren't ready. So they pushed it back and nothing we can do about it. 
uh, so that's fine. But the question is here, guys, what do you think about Godzilla vs. Kong getting pushed back over six months? Uh, are you obviously disappointed like I am? Um, but are you relieved that they're putting more effort and more time into this movie? They now have an entire another half a year to work on the film. Jump in the comment section below and let me know your guys' thoughts. And with that down, let's move on to main topic number two, which is that Jurassic World 3 Dominion, if you guys didn't know it's the title, uh, is will be the first movie to resume filming in the United Kingdom. And this is a super significant thing. It's not going to take a long time to discuss, but I do think it is worth noting that out of all the other movies that are coming out and being pushed back, Jurassic World Dominion, I didn't quite get an official date as to when they were going to start filming again, but the fact of the matter is that Jurassic World Dominion is going to be the first movie to resume filming in the United Kingdom, and I am so excited for that. I th did they say it's a June 2021 release? It's either June or July of 2021, and I'm absolutely stoked because I love every single Jurassic Park, Jurassic World film, divisive as they may be, as unpopular in opinion as that may be. I absolutely love it. I thought Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was the second best Jurassic film, period. Uh, I could talk about Jurassic Park and Jurassic World all day long. More on that later. Got a little teaser for you guys. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad that they're moving forward. I really... If they were to push the release date like to the end of 2021, I would understand, you know? But they're early enough in... They're early enough in production where some halts aren't going to do a ton of damage. Obviously, I'm not there filming, so I can't really say that. But, you know, they're early enough in filming, thankfully, that it's not going to be a huge hit to them if they have to stop. Like they did for two, three weeks, a month, maybe. But I'm glad they're moving forward. I absolutely, I'm so excited for this film. Uh, when they gave it a title, I thought, I think Jurassic World Dominion sounds fantastic. I thought Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was just a fantastic sequel, and it pushed the story forward more than most other sequels can take credit for. Uh, it it was fantastic. I love it. I love the Jurassic World franchise, the Jurassic Park franchise. I love this saga, and I want to see what they do with this third and final chapter, maybe. You never know. Of the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World franchise. The fact that, you know... Um, Oh, what is her name? Uh, the girl who plays Ellie Sattler. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I, I know her name. Uh, but, you know, you got Ellie Sattler coming back. You got, you got Alan Grant coming back. And Laura Dern. That's her name. Laura Dern. And Laura Dern and Sam Neill coming back. And then Ian Malcolm coming back. Jeff Goldblum. And you got the whole cast back. And it's really going to be a reunification of the saga and it's going to be so refreshing to see on the big screen the Jurassic Park and the Jurassic World trilogies combining for one big final chapter supposedly and I absolutely cannot wait I'm so happy they're resuming filming so the real question is guys are you excited for Jurassic World Dominion uh did Jurassic World or Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom really just turn you off and you did not like it at all or are you actually excited for this like I am jump in the comment section below and let me know what you guys think below and with that down, let's move on to main topic number three, which is a kind of a big one, but that is that No Time to Die, one of my most anticipated films of the year, has moved has moved to its to oh my gosh, why can't I talk? It's moved back to its original November twentieth spot. And when I say moved back, I don't mean that it was pushed back six months and then it came back and back to November 20th, that's not what I mean, obviously. What I mean is that it was supposed to be released on November 25th, and it wasn't. It got put, it moved forward five days on November 20th, and there's actually more to this story than a lot of reporters and journalists and news places are letting on. So there, easi there easily could have been something going on behind the scenes with uh, Warner Brothers and, I can't remember, is it? Who owns James Bond? Is it? It's not Sony. I can't remember. But Warner Brothers owns Godzilla vs. Kong. And it could easily be something, some beef between them. I'm Obviously, I'm not there. I don't work there. I don't know that there's beef between them. I'm not saying there's beef between them. I'm just saying that it's a possibility. So Godzilla vs. Kong was supposed to come out on November 20th. 
that was its original, excuse me, that was its original release date. Was Godzilla vs. Kong was supposed to hit theaters on November 20th, 2020. So, what I'm thinking happened is, Godzilla vs. Kong might have suspected that No Time to Die was going to blow them out of the water. And then, if you're going to ask my opinion, which one do I think is going to make more money? I'm going to say No Time to Die. I think No Time to Die is going to make a considerable amount more money than Godzilla vs. Kong, as crazy as that sounds. But just going off of how much money Spectre made and how much money Skyfall made, those two movies together made over $2 billion. It's an incredibly successful franchise because they do it well most of the time. So that... Obviously, I think part of it is that Godzilla vs. Kong wasn't ready, and that's fine. So they got they pushed it back, so they didn't release... So they don't release a rushed, not-finished product. So they wanted to release it when it's ready. May 21st, 2021 is a perfect release date for that. So... Both of these movies benefit from this move, big time. Because now, you have Godzilla vs. Kong release, releasing on May 21st, 2021, before a majority of other big-budget films have time to push back. So Godzilla vs. Kong has now claimed the May 21st, 2021 spot, and getting are now getting people excited for that release on that day. Whereas, now that it moved... No Time to Die can move back to its November 20th spot instead of 25th. So now both films don't have to compete against each other. That's one less film. No Time to Die can take all the money in that November 20th weekend. And Godzilla vs. Kong, right now as it stands at least, before other movies are announced, can take most of the money from that May 21st, 2021 spot. So both films and... Even if it wasn't beef between the studios, it easily could have been both studios wanting to benefit each other, wanting to help each other out. So they're like, okay, Godzilla vs. Kong, realistically speaking, isn't going to get released on May 21st, 20, or on November 20th either. So we'll push it back six months and we'll have more time to finish it. Uh, no, James Bond, No Time to Die, you guys can have the November 20th weekend spot. Go crazy. We'll go crazy on May 21st, 2021. It could have been like that. It could have easily just been a case of Godzilla vs. Kong not being finished, and everybody, including myself, is overthinking this whole situation. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that one movie was pushed back six months, and one movie was moved forward five days. So, uh, one of them is definitely good news. One of them can be considered good news to you if you want a good movie and not a rushed product. But that is essentially... All I have for you guys today, yeah, kind of just over 13 minutes right now, that's kind of weird. I'm sorry it didn't go as long as I figured it would, but one more thing before I go is that earlier when I was talking about Jurassic World Dominion and how I could talk about Jurassic Park forever, I found someone on Reddit, and I'm going to hopefully soon, like, you know, maybe the next episode, the episode after that, not really sure, I'm going to have them on the show as a guest, and we are going to just dedicate an entire episode of the Justin Jorgensen podcast to talking about Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. And obviously I've seen each of the films several, several, several times. Uh, he's actually read the books, and we're going to discuss the differences and similarities between the movies and the books. I have not read the books, but that's perfect because then I can have him on as a guest and we could talk about what does he like about the books, what did the books do wrong? What did the books do right? What changed? What didn't change? So definitely look forward to that. And I'm looking forward to it, guys. We've got big things coming, uh, cool things coming and happening for the show in the future. Thank you guys so much, as always, for watching. This has been episode number 17 of the Justin Dorgerson Podcast, and I will see you guys all in the next episode.